Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 1 vs 1 on Tali Ihan Tala and I'm going to be playing with the Panzer Division Tatra on the red side using the balance deployment type. And I'm going to be up against the Aman 222 who's on the blue side using the 11th SS Freiwilligen Panzer Grenadier Nordland and the Vanguard deployment type. So this is game two of two games played in the group stage of Division 3 of the Still Division 2 League. If you missed the first game, definitely go back and check it out. I will leave a link in the description. But with that said, spoiler alert, I won the first game. So I was actually really happy going into this one. I was on a high. I was very pleased with myself after winning the first game. But I knew that it came down to the man's division choice in comparison to mine quite a lot so the first polish going up against the south africans i had a huge infantry advantage there and i leveraged it to win basically in this game he is playing with the 11th ss and that is a division that i am a lot more scared of on a map such as tali Antala, where he can make great use of his bombers in the early to mid game so with the vanguard deployment type he can get his arado in very quickly and he can use it to devastating effect in uh, large areas around these flags so here for example is a great place to bomb because there's going to be a bunch of infantry here trying to defend this flag uh, he could bomb here he could bomb like this area which is often contested and there's some really good places for those arados to drop their 1000 kilogram bombs and that's what i was really really worried about going into this matchup then in phase b he can get the one that gets even better bombs which is basically i think a 1000 kilogram bomb and like two 500 kilogram bombs as well so it's a little bit more powerful and that thing can do even more damage and take out armor very very easily but since he's playing vanguard again which i believe he was doing kind of for the memes at this point um basically i just need to get to phase c and i have one uh in theory right it, it doesn't always work out that way but in theory, get to phase C and I should win because I have a rather sizable advantage at that point. That's 65 points per minute, which allows me to pretty much bring like an extra tank or an extra couple units of infantry uh, every tick, which can really, really start to add up over time. Anyway, let's have a quick look at what's going down on the field. I've got some of these Panzer boxes uh, to send forwards early on. Uh, Panzer Division Tatra is one of the few Axis divisions that has these AT rifle squads early on. And also the great thing about these is they're only five points, so they're really good transport sniping units. There's a Pack 37 there. I've got Volkssturm, I've got a Pack 36, a MG34, and I've got a Volkssturm and the Avkala there. Yeah, the Volkssturm's going to be basically just holding this flag, and the is going to be dropped off here to provide recon so I can see if any infantry's trying to sneak around. And then I'm going to be sending the 222 to help with the push here. Uh, on the bottom side, I've got the 47, I've got the Panzerbuchser, two Panzerbuchser with the MG34, another Pack 37, MG34, another Pack 36 and Volkssturm. On the bottom side, more of these Panzer Buxers, Pan, uh, Pack 37, Sturm Grenadiers with the SBW231, and also a Sturm Pioneer in there. And I've got two of these Panzer 38Ts, and I also brought out a BF109 G2. Now these BF109 G2s they have 620 km per hour speed, so I was planning to use it to counter an Arado if he tried to go for like a cheesy start. And you might also be wondering why I've got loads of AT guns and loads of uh, AT rifles. And that is basically to counter his early armor play. So he's got a lot of these like SBW-231s and the Pumas in the 11th SS. So I was kind of hoping to shut that down early on. And I've already managed to take out one of the SBW-231s on the bottom side here. So that was really good. I also managed to get a cheeky transport snipe there on the top side, so that was nice. Uh, Pack 37, however, is gonna go down to these Pioneers. My Sturm Grenadier, gonna get caught out a little bit in the open here. SS Sturm Grenadiers are actually really cool. They are eight MP4s, MP44s, and two MG42s. So they do have some pretty good ranged engagement tools, but two Pioneers is two MG34s, and then they got the Panzergram with two MG42s as well, plus the Pumas firing at it. So that, actually, that unit goes down very quickly. But if I can utilize like a heavy to no cover engagement or a heavy to light cover engagement with these SS Sherm Grenadiers, they're going to absolutely shred. Uh, I did manage to uh, shoot down an aircraft here early on. Uh, that was, I believe, a Focke Wolf. 
that my DO managed to head on and kill. I brought this in to pretty much kill it. Uh, these only cost 55 points, but they have four 20 mils in the nose. So if I can get head on with the Vokwolf, I'm going to shoot it down. And the BF-109 manages to get away with that as well. But the SS Stem Grenadiers on the bottom side here getting a really good infantry engagement initially against the Amad's uh, Pioneers. I do have the leader in here, so these are all two-star veterancy. I'm also winning the MG engagement across the open against his MG-42s with my MG-34s due to the help with of the uh, Panzer 38T. And on this top side, the 222 tried to push up but got taken out by the Puma. So I'm off to a reasonably good start and the DO is going to be coming in here to help finish off the MG-42. So I managed to take that out, get a bit of damage onto the Panzergren as well. Since this Vokal Wolf's been shot down early on, this DO-217 is pretty clear to just continuously strafe for this phase. Uh, so only three minutes into the game, but I've managed to stabilize a 13 to 11 against Vanguard in phase A. So I'm pretty happy with my position so far. I don't need to be super aggressive. He's basically got to be the one that comes to me in the early game and tries to get that advantage early on. So I'm just bringing in more pack 37s. As you can see, I'm just really bunkering down with as many light AT guns as I can because I know that he's trying to utilize these Pumas and light vehicles in order to get the job done. But here comes the Arado with its 1000 kilogram bomb. I know exactly where that's going. So I'm just going to be trying to dodge as best as I can. It goes straight onto the Pioneer if Yellow takes it out, but the Sturm Grenadiers are going to be left alive, and I managed to get the Panzer Boxers back as well. So I think I did a relatively good job there of getting out of the way of that bomb. It's just a shame that my leader was the one that ended up getting sacrificed. It was kind of mispositioned a little bit, so maybe my fault. But with that bomb coming down, Theo is going to be trying to push in with the Pioneer. He's got another Pioneer on the way as well that's going for the fast move to, towards the Shem, uh, Grenadiers. So I am going to have to be a bit careful here not to get my unit surrendered. But my Sturm Pioneer is thankfully quite up to scratch. And I've also got the Pack 37 that's going to get a nice shot onto that Pioneer squad. Even at, Look how much these are pinned and how much damage they're going to do to these Panzergrens absolutely rip them open it's really really nice anyway Dio is still flying around looking for a strafing targets probably could have brought it to this bottom side actually to deal with that pioneer but uh, Theo back here has brought in an 88 that's going to be unloading periodically I've also got this Verflammen that's now going to be moving into range to hit the Stug that he's brought into this town I know there's going to be other targets here other than just the Stug, but if I kill the Stug with the Verflammen, it's worth it anyway. So, yeah, looking for the the shots onto the Stug. He's actually going to move the Stug forwards into the position where I was placing the rocket, so that was really good. I'm going to get some smoke down there just to stop the Pioneer Fjord from shooting my Stug Pioneer at range. But here goes the Verflammen. Uh, the Stug actually outranging this Pack 37. The Pack 37 only has 1,000 meter range, so not much it can do against the Stug 4. But yeah, this is a really nicely placed Verflammen strike. And I knew that it was going to be pretty spawn on because I could see the MG42 there. He's going to be trying to dodge it with his units. Uh, going to be pinning them down. Managed to get a rock on target there onto the Stug 4. Honestly, the rockets could have been better, like if they were more on this side of the circle. All of his infantry would have been dead, along with the Stug, and that would have been absolutely incredible. Uh, but still, a really strong strike. Killed the MG, killed the Stug, pinned down everything else and forced it back. And now I'm doing like a fast move with the Panzer 38 to try and surrender, basically, whatever was left. Pack 36, again, coming into play here, going to be trying to shoot the SBW-231. The great thing about these is they have a fantastic rate of fire, like 15 round per minute rate of fire with two star veterancy puts it up to like 18 or 20 round per minute rate of fire or something. So they just absolutely murder these uh, light vehicles very, very easily. Pioneer Fjorda do manage to take it out. Really, really good kill. Uh, unfortunately, the Panzer and the Panzerstrek are going to have recovered. But I'm not too worried about you losing a pack, uh, oh sorry, a Panzer 38T. Like they're expendable. They're only 20 points, um, and it did manage to pick off the leader before it died. So I would say that was worth it. Anyway, first of the Panthers from the 11th SS going to be arriving for Theoman here. Going to be forcing my Volksturm back, and the Volksturm was going to try and follow up on the 
Panzer 38T, but can't get across the open now with the pan with the Panther firing at it. MD34 going to be forcing back the infantry that was pushing across the open from Theoman as well. And I've also got this uh, MG42 that's moving up that's just going to be able to help doing the same thing. So I'm pretty much just dotting loads of support weapons across the open here to prevent these light vehicles from coming forwards. Uh, Theoman has now brought in two 88s. Those are definitely going to play a part when it comes to the air engagement. These uh, actually help protect his aircraft quite a lot. And getting them set up early on is really, really nice for him because uh, the Arado is going to be really, really difficult to kill. And he can just constantly keep bringing that in uh, for strikes onto my clumped up infantry. Like if you were to bomb this again, you can see how much damage it would probably do. Uh, but another Panzergren on the way here. It's going to be joining the Volkssturm on the bottom side. My plan was to kind of push this across the open here in order to get into the trees on the bottom side. And I've also got a Volkssturm just to kind of bolster up the middle. Again, I'm still going with the idea that if I hold the ground in the early game, then I, I will just win by default kind of thing. Now, Rado coming in again with the 1,000 kilogram bomb. Looking for the kill onto the MG34. I'm going to notice where that's going. So I'm going to be trying to split my units. And it's going to go straight into the MG34. Panzergren remains very healthy with the 10 health there. I was really lucky that this Puma actually didn't snipe my Panzergren coming across this bridge. That was actually something that I noticed at the time. I was like, oh damn, that was lucky that I didn't lose that. Anyway, BF-109 did come in to try and respond to the Arado, but way too late. The nice thing about the BF-109, though, is that it can kind of dodge the shots from the 88s quite well if you keep it turning. So that was kind of the plan. Uh, but Theo has brought up some reinforcing infantry now to put some pressure in the center. I brought up an MG-42 that's going to be trying to uh, help mow them down on the road. I've also got the MG-34 there helping as well. Uh, Volkssturm and Sturm Pioneer, these were planning to get into the tree line here and push around this side of the lake in order to get pressure onto this flag. Um, I have also now brought up a Pack 43 Krupp that's going to be looking for the shots onto the Panther. So he has marked that, he sees it coming. The Puma, I think, spotted it. But. Yeah, I'm just going to be trying to hide that. I've also got another Pack 43 here that's going to be trying to cover the open ground as well. The, th the other reason I brought in these Pack 43 groups is because I knew they would be a good target for his Arados. And if he's not firing at my... Or if he's not bombing my infantry, this is good for me. Like, I, I don't mind if he kills these Pack 43s with his Arados. Like, they're kind of bait for them. Um... Obviously, losing them does kind of hurt because they're like 100 points apiece. But if I can kill a panther and then it gets bombed, like it's totally worth it. So that's why I was bringing them in. Anyway, the Verflammen looking for the rocket strike here onto the Panther D. I'm really hoping that I can get a decent kill here, just like I did with the Stug. Three rockets landed nearby, but didn't get the kill. Definitely left it on low health, though, which is fine for now. Panzer 3 also managed to kill off the Puma here, which was a good kill. And this Puma now firing at the Panzergren is going to reveal it for the engagement with the second Panzer III. Uh, this MG42 uh, gets taken out by the Schwindenzug, which was unfortunate. But the DO going to be coming to the rescue and pinning down these Panzergrens. Going to be seeing the Stukas of Fuss go for the Pack 43. And it does manage to get some damage on it, but not kill it off. I'm happy with that. He's used up an entire Stukas of Fuss volley just to pretty much get nothing. So there we go. DO217 forced back by the 88s this time around. So not able to just freely strafe this time anymore. And now we've moved into phase B. So his income advantage is still going to be there for a little while uh, since he's had the extra 30 points per minute for the entirety of phase A, which means he's going to be like th technically 300 points worth of units ahead of me. Um, but I've traded very well uh, in phase A. Like my phase A probably couldn't have gone any better really um, there are like certain mistakes like little mistakes I've made here and there but overall I was actually really pleased with my position at the moment like it's still 12 to 12 in a balance versus Vanguard engagement that is really good um, so yeah really chuffed with where I am early on 
I'm still kind of making ground like the pioneer is going to go down here uh, the puma is in a bit of a rough position especially my panzer books is hanging about and there's basically no infantry here on the bottom side and I know that so I'm going to be push, trying to push forward with the SS Stern pioneers and uh, take that flag but Theo going really hard in the center here with all of these panzergrands I'm still reloading my Verflammen, so I don't really have that to rely on because this would be a really good target right now for the uh, Verflammen. But bringing the Panzerbuxes across, looking for the shot. Unfortunately, the Panzerbuxes, they are very limited on penetration. They've only got 25 millimeters of penetration, so yeah, that's not going to be really enough to get through the front line that effectively. And it is going to be able to fall back out of range. But Stern Pioneer did use the smoke to get across the open in the meantime. And that's going to allow me to secure the flag. So now a 13 to 11 in the early game again against the Vanguard deployment type. Again, still very happy with my position. I've also now brought up a Tiger and a Panzer 38 to help deal with all of this infantry. Like unless the Man brings round the Panther, I should be absolutely fine in this engagement. And the other nice thing is the Panther's damaged, so the Tiger should technically trade regardless um, if it gets on target at close range. Uh, Arado going to be coming in there with the bomb, going to be taking out the Sturm Pioneer, going to give back the flag to Theoman for the time being. Panzerbuchs are there looking for the shot onto the Sturm Pioneer. Unfortunately, didn't get it, but the second one did, and Sturm Pioneers go down before they unload, which is great. Second Arado now on the way, though. Here's the one with the 1,000 kilogram bomb and the two 500 kilogram bombs, and that's going to have a lovely target onto my Tiger. And this was a very nasty bombing strike because that took out both the Panzer 38T and the Tiger and pinned my infantry when, you know, the Amal has such a local superiority of forces. A very, very crucial Arado bombing strike that I really should have seen coming. But I did not. And uh, that is definitely going to pave the way for a lot of land gain in the center for the Amal. This is kind of the crucial moment for Vanguard, so him getting that big bombing strike is really, really good for him. Uh, just like Maverick has a sweet spot of like the 20 to 25 minute mark where it still can really leverage its income advantage, Vanguard has like the sweet spot of like the 10 to 15 minute mark. And right now it's 14 minutes 20. So the man really is making good use of his income. I realize how close his panther is getting to my Verflammen, so I'm going to be having to fall that back. I've got a bunch of these uh, Pioneers with the MG 26s, Panzergrens with the MG 26s. These are all 20 points apiece. So this tick, I just brought in loads of infantry. I already had the Tiger on the way to the bottom side uh, to kind of support that. Uh, but I believe I potentially move that to engage in the center instead. Panther's going to be coming around to try and engage the SBW-231 though, and it's also going to prevent my Panzergrenz from really zooming up this road towards the town. I'm in a bit of a difficult position, that's for sure. Pack 43 also going to be get, getting found here by the Panzergrenz as it fires HE at them, uh, which was my mistake. I should have turned off the HE on that Pack 43 to avoid it being found by infantry in that respect. Anyway, Tiger, I'm going to be able to help engage these infantry at least. This pack 43 takes a little bit of a wrong turn. I was trying to like move it up to engage the Panther D, but he saw it coming. So that, And the Panzer Grenz, of course, can get the MGs on target there, so that's not great. But my Sturm Grenadier still doing a fantastic job against the Amman's MG26 Panzer Grenz on the bottom side. You can see they've been chewed up and forced back, even though these are on very low health, so that was very good for me. The Pack 43, of course, is going to finally go down. The MG42 was also on target there, and uh, that's obviously not good. So, Panzergren's going to be bumping into my Pioneers. That does save the Pack 43 for the time being. And I'm going to be able to clean up that squad, but the AT8 is going to transport snipe me. That was unfortunate, and another mistake I could have avoided. Tiger looking for the Panzergrand kill there and you can see it's my tiger slowly moving up to try and deal with the panther and meanwhile the Panzergrand is kind of just like pushing across the open here got the opal blitz coming in with the rocket strike onto the town panther really needs to get out of the asap because it is damaged one of those rockets landing even nearby would probably kill it uh, that verfram strike unfortunately though really not hitting the mark the man 
going to reply with his own stickers of this. Looking for my tiger. And doesn't manage to really find a rocket close enough, so I was relatively happy with that. But meanwhile, down on this bottom side, the multiple Sturm Pioneers coming in did manage to clean up my low health SS Sturm Grenadiers. So he's going to be able to maintain a 14 to 10. I'm not too worried at this point about a 14 to 10. As long as I don't give him another flag, I don't have too much to worry about. Because again, the later it goes, the more I'm going to be able to bring in than the uh, with his uh, Vanguard deck. In theory. Panzergrand MG26 at close range. Pretty decent. I have the veterancy advantage as well, thanks to the Pioneer Fjord I managed to save. So that's working out pretty nicely for me. Ziggers of us are going to be kind of moving down the road here. I was really hoping to get a shot onto that when I saw it. But I couldn't ignore the Panther. I had to kill the Panther, of course. So Panther goes down first. I believe the... I believe it did manage to shoot my uh, tiger and penetrate it, but this Arado gets really, really close up here to my air spawn, and I'm able to get a BF-109 out. So, going to be hunting this down. You'll see I'm air microing this to get close. I kind of cut across, and I'm on the back of it, and I shoot it down. That is really big kill for me. That's not the better one. You can see the better one lands a very juicy strike onto all of my infantry there. I do nearly get onto the back of it. You can see how close I am to getting onto the back of it. I nearly got a double kill there onto his Arados. It would have been huge. That would have been such a game changer. Because those Arados, like they get, they can just gather like infinite value throughout the game. And you're probably thinking, why aren't you bringing in any AA? Well, the, the point is because those Arados are so fast, it's very difficult for the AA to apply enough damage to prevent the bombing strike in the first place, like the fullback, and then it's not going to even be able to shoot it down because by the time, again, it's done the damage, the Arado is going to be out of the way. So, yeah, not ideal. Um, and so bringing in AA is kind of pointless, but if I can get onto the back of them with the really fast BF-109s, then that's the way to do it and that's the way I was trying to do it here my Stug really just failing to hit the Stug 4 at all uh, I have the veterancy advantage and when I do hit it I don't even penetrate that's mainly due to the 100 front armor there it does give me a, a higher bounce chance than he has like he has 135 mils of penetration versus my 90 front armor I've got 135 mils of penetration against his 100 front armor and at that range it makes quite a big difference so my Stug 3 goes down I didn't even manage to penetrate the Stug 4 once really really bad honestly but the Agpanzer that has 130 mils of frontal armor and 145 mils of penetration so Definitely going to be able to get my own back onto the Stug 4 with the Jagdpanzer, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Stug 4 goes down. Now I'm also looking for an engagement with this Panther D with the Stug at close range. The Stug at close range can definitely penetrate the 120 mils of frontal armor. At, like if it were to come through here and engage at that range, I would also have a rate of fire advantage as well with the Venerancy, so that would be something I can take advantage of. Uh, Puma taking shots at my Panzer three, but my Panzer three, I'm kind of just zooming that forwards right now in order to keep the pressure on the IG. Because if I can take out this IG, this is one of the big tools that Theoman has to control the ranged engagement. So killing that now would be really, really good. And my Stem Pioneer is currently running across the open here. I'm trying to like intercept the IG to kill it off. Uh, I also managed to kill off the, sh the Puma here, which is really, really nice. So, yeah, just looking to take care of that. Unfortunately, the uh, Panther did manage to win the engagement against the Stug. Unfortunately, uh, I can't really remember what what happened there, but basically the Panther took no damage. I think I must have missed or something at like really close range. It was kind of stupid. Uh, or I just didn't aim in time, something like that. And now I'm kind of reliant on this Tiger uh, getting the shot on target. But it is damaged, so uh, if the Panther's not damaged, he's just going to trade into that any day. I do have a nice push coming through here on the bottom side, like the SBW-231, the 222. There's really nothing here to really stop my advance right now. And I'm just going to be like kind of attack moving everything forwards. Uh, the Jagdpanzer should have also been moving forwards there, but I must have missed that. 
Uh, Stigger's Fist is going to be coming in with the rockets, and that's going to be able to take out the Pack 43 clip there. And, well, it's not too much of a problem. I didn't really need it to kill anything out in the open at the moment, so I wasn't that, like, dismayed by it. Like, he used the entire stick as a first volley to kill it, so I'm relatively happy. But the Pioneers, uh, with the MG-426s, should be able to take care of the enemy pounds at close range, so that was fine. But Thea Man coming in now with the play, the 259s just charging down this road, and just as I moved up my Verflammen as well. I believe I was moving up my Verflammen here to hit, like, the AT-8 and the uh, IGs up here. But, um, yeah, they ended up spotting my Verflammen. And they're also going to spot these pioneers in the open which is really bad uh, but the dos they're going to be just going for the pioneers in the open and see how much damage they do great strafing planes and well yeah i'm going to try and do a runner but theo did see it so he's going to be hunting it down this pioneer does get caught out by the panzergrens at machine gun range so it does get killed off and the 259 is going to be able to kill off the Verflammen. So a bit of a big loss for me, honestly. And I also brought in a 150 that's also going to be trying to, you know, suppress and kill these 88s. But, yeah, wasn't really working out well. My Jagdpanzer, I believe, bounced the Panther D or something. And so another Panther just completely got away with killing my tank without taking any damage, which was really crazy. Uh, this Arado coming in with the bombing strike. Uh, that was unfortunate. Panther D takes out the Stug. At that range again, I should have been able to kill it. Uh, two, three, ones trying to go for the kill, but gets taken out as well. Um, I did manage to take out the 259 before it killed the uh, 150, but it did kill off the Maltier, so I lost my ammunition there. Pioneers managed to kill off the Panzergrands. And, well... With that push coming through, it wasn't all bad. Like, I traded kind of bad. Like, the Jagdpanzer going down and the Stug going down. Like, armor-wise, things didn't go my way. But I did manage to kill his uh, 259s that overextended and kind of solidify my line. So, yeah, it was a lot of pressure. And uh, it was kind of scary for a moment there. But um, I kind of just about managed to help, like, hold on for the time being. BF109 getting a lovely double strafe there as well with the Pioneer and the... Uh, leader in the open that was really good but my Volksturms move forwards the Volksturm I, I think I moved them forwards to actually kill the enemy infantry there those two one health infantry but then the double IG is uh, causing me problems and the Arado is also coming in with the bomb to kill that off and if the Volksturm's dead that's gonna definitely relinquish those flags in the open but 13 to uh, 11 for a little while 12 to 12 now things kind of stabilizing after what was a really wild series of events like at this point in the game I was stressing out with 25 minutes in like that means we're in phase C right and technically I should be at quite a quite an advantage now with my income but I didn't really feel that way you know I wasn't really that close to winning the take the time is still going um, yeah I'm trying to use this SPW-231 right now to kill his Pioneer in the open. He's trying to get the Panther D up uh, to engage it. Uh, but that Panther D is not going to be able to kill the 231 for now. I'm just going to be able to get really nice and close to the Pioneers and engage them. Didn't want them to throw the TNT, so I backed off a little bit. Uh, Panther D, however, in the meantime, took out the Panther or Panzer III. But the thing is, with the Vanguard deployment type, the thing that really kind of st stuck with this division in particular is that because he has Arados, because he has the Stukas of First, he can get like continuous value out of the units that he invested into in Phase A. So he's still got both of his 88s on the field. He's got the Stukas of First still. He's still got like a, one of his bombers. And as long as he keeps using those to get kills, he's going to remain in the game. Uh, so it was making it very, very difficult for me to uh, take ground, basically. Um, but my. AT guns here, trying to get on target, trying to kill the Panzergrenz, unfortunately kind of whiffing completely or not even aiming in the first place, and the IGs are both going to get on target there to uh, take out my AT guns. There goes down one of them at least. 
But since his Panzer guns are getting close here and they don't have any AT as I can see uh, due to this AT gun and I can also see the two IGs, I'm actually going to bring up uh, Jagdpanzer and two Stug 3Es. Now these Stuggies, as I like to call them, the Stuggies, um, they are one of my favourite units in the game. They just look cool and uh, they have really insane rate of fire. Um, they are fantastic 35 point guns. I'm going to try and utilize them to kill both the IGs and the Panzergrands and kind of just clean up this area of the map in order to give myself the flags back. And if I get those flags back, I'm going to be at an advantage and that would be good for me. Um, then we have the Panzergrands. They're going to be dealing with the Sturm Pioneers here, get close enough to surrender them, which is really good. Cleaning out all of the infantry from these trees is really good for me. Um, and I'm also kind of in a nice position here as well. The great thing about... Uh, the Panzergrenz with the MD26s is they're better than the Panzergrenz with the MD34s and the MD42s at close range. Now that was unlucky and not getting the penetration there. Panzer 4 just not doing the job. It missed the second shot as well. Panther's going to be able to kill it off. That was really, really bad for me. Also, pack Black 41 going to take out the Panzer 3. And in the meantime, my pack 36, I believe it missed its first rocket. Uh, it does have these 37mm, it says heat shells, but they're basically rockets that they can fire. And I used it to kill off this panther at range, because it does have a 750 meter range. First one missed, which is it's kind of likely for it to miss, because it's only got 30% accuracy. But with two-star venerancy, you'd expect it to do a little bit better. Second time round, it did hit the mark, and it did get the kill. So I was happy in the end with that. I have managed to kill off both of the IGs here, which is good, and now I'm just trying to deal with these Panzergrenz. So I'm bringing in my own Panzergrenz to reveal the enemy infantry, and then I can move forwards the Stokes to take them out. Um, meanwhile, on the bottom though, uh, my push has kind of fallen apart here. Like all, all of my light vehicles and stuff have been killed off. The Panzer IV not killing, or at least damaging the Panther D was really kind of bad for me. Like this should have taken damage at least from the Panzer IV. Like, I was fine with the Panzer D, like, winning against the Panzer IV in that engagement, but not my Panzer IV not hitting and then, or not bouncing and then not hitting was just, like, really kind of frustrating because I was not having a good time against these Panthers throughout this game. Tigger's Vest coming in with another rocket strike. This one's going to be heading straight for those Pioneers. Uh, and in the meantime, well, I am strafing the Flak 41. I've also got the Panzergrenz uh, hitting it with the MGs. And the plan was to basically pin down the Flak 41s so I could rush it with the Stugs. So you can see the Stugs here have taken out the Panzergrenz. I've also managed to pin this Panzergrenz. And we've got, we've also got the JU-87s coming in. So I'm just going to continuously strafe the AT-8 with the BF-109. Uh, go for it with the SBW-222. Got the uh, Stugs coming across the open. JU-87s coming in. And this is where you can see the balanced income really coming to light. So, just going to be bombing that 88 to death. Also land a nice bomb onto the Stukas of Fuss. And that is pretty much a crucial moment in this game. Like, cleaning up one of the 88s, taking out that Stukas of Fuss. It's one of those units that he needs to continuously do damage to me throughout the game in this position. So, removing that is really, really nice. I am going to lose another Panzer IV, though. Panzer IVs were just really not doing anything for me this game. It was really bad. Arado coming in with the bombing strike on the bottom side as well is going to clean up a couple of my infantry units. And it also pinned down this unit and he gets to surrender. So he is still making ground. And again, these, these units, these are the absolute awesome units that the 11th SS gets access to that makes it so damn strong. BF-109 still going for the strafe there. Uh, Dio also coming in for the strafe onto the pack 40. Lovely amount of damage done. He has now got a flak 36 though, so I've got to be a little bit careful. Another Dio coming in to try and finish that off. Uh, meanwhile, the 222 freely moving forwards. A lot of the, his infantry doesn't have AT, so I'm able to utilize these really, really well. Uh, Dio unfortunately failing to kill the pack 40 there. And well, this bottom side is still really not in a good spot. I've got two Panzer Fords on the way. I was hoping at least if I could get them close enough that I could kill the Panther D with these. That was the plan. I mean, it hadn't really worked out for me that way so far, but uh, yeah, I was going to give it a go. A uh, really lucky shot there from the AP round of the 105. It's got 35% accuracy. It managed to one-shot my Stug 3 at max range and force me to back off. These things only have like... 
four AP shells and I managed to hit two of them with 35% accuracy. <laughs> I was just like, you're just kidding me right now. <laughs> like this game was stressful. I'm not gonna lie. Nice nice hit though from my Yuck Panzer does manage to hit the Panther D and then the Panzer IV are gonna be close enough to get the kill. So that was nice. Panther D down and He's going to get to a point where he doesn't have any Panthers left, and I believe that was pretty much at this point. Uh, you can see he's he's got none left on the map at least. I'm not sure he had many more in his division at this point. But I was pretty confident that my armor would start to overwhelm his uh, with the Jagdpanzers on the way, with the Panzer IVs pushing forwards like this. Yeah, I was, I was relatively happy with my position now. I just needed to kind of seal the deal uh, because he was constantly doing damage over and over again with the Arado. Thankfully the Stickers of Fuss is dead, so that's like the second piece of the puzzle taken care of after the first piece of the puzzle that I took care of was the first Arado. The final piece of the puzzle would be killing off the better Arado. Now HE-111 is going to get off a couple bombs here towards the IGs, but didn't get all of them off. I think it only landed or dropped two. Thankfully both of the two that it did drop killed one of the IGs so that was pretty nice. The AT ain't going to be hammering that so that's not going to be back anytime soon and well, ends up getting shot down so yeah not ideal but at least killing the IG was something and now what I can do is potentially move up my Panzer Grenadiers to engage the second IG and on this bottom side the Panzer Fours can help deal with a lot of this infantry and so on. So we're still at 12 to 12. Uh, the tickets are close enough that if I get like a single tick, I can still win by the 50 minute mark. Uh, there is, of course, the rule in the Steel Division League where if it gets to 50 minutes, whoever's got the most tickets wins. Uh, at this moment in time, I have slightly less tickets than the Man, But yeah, as I said, getting a just a slight lead uh, would be enough. Uh, now with the MD-26 uh, engaging the AT-8, I'm just coming in with the double strafing run onto the AT-8. That's going to allow my Panzer IVs to move forwards and engage that as well. Get the Jagdpanzer to engage it. Just get rid of that long-range weapon. J-87 in the meantime also going to be able to take advantage of the AA being pinned down to take out the IG. So that worked out really, really well. And a good series of plays there. Jagdpans are also going to be engaging the Stug 3 at range. And it was my time for some luck. And I get it. Stug 3 goes down. Uh, Dio is now going to be hanging about trying to shoot down the... Well, sorry, strafe the Panzergrens there on the top side. That's what the plan was with those. Panzer IV also going to be able to get some good shots towards the Stug IV. I managed to get a nice side shot in there. And then the Jagdpanzer is able to kill it through the front armor. So that worked out really, really nicely. Now we've got the Pack 40 engaging my Jagdpanzer at range. This is like 145 mils of pen against 130 mils of front armor. So at like max range, this isn't going to have that high a chance of penetration and I'm also going to be able to get the Panzergrenz on target here with the MG26 and the Car 98s so surround that take it out Volksturm moved all the way up on this bottom right side going to be finding some pioneers there but as soon as the front line goes over the Volksturm that's going to give me the flag on the bottom side we're going to be 14 to 12 and yeah most of his units are broken down like killing both of those reinforcing Stugs pretty much sealed the deal at this point uh, because the Panzergrenz are going to go down. That's going to give me another flag there. That's going to be 15 to 9. If I can kill off this Pioneer. Then I don't have much to worry about on the bottom side as well. And I've got the JU87 coming in to deal with that. The Jagdpanzers are quite happily moving up. And I'm going to be able to control this road. Because again I kind of realised that he's not going to have any Panthers left. So my Jagdpanzers are pretty free to move forwards. Just got to be a little bit careful of AT guns of course. But as long as I engage them at range I should be fine. And yeah, 15 to 9. So finally managing to get there. And uh, at this point, I could safely say that I was going to win. I was quite happy with uh, my position at this point. The Panzergrenz, however, holding on. MG42s going to be pushing back my Panzergrenz with the MG26s. And Theo's going to be bringing in a bunch of these 
259s. So they're going to be kind of making a large ditch effort here. But I'm still aggressively pushing forward the Jagdpanzers. Again, I don't need to worry about any of this infantry with my tanks because it doesn't have any AT. Um, it's one thing that's kind of uh, annoying about the 11th SS in a lot of ways is that your infantry doesn't have those uh, AT options in the form of like the Panzerfaust. But with this Jagdpanzer coming through, I am going to be spotting these 259s on the way and check out these Jagdpanzers. So I'm going to be targeting the first one. Nice shot there. I'm going to be targeting the next one. And there we go, another shot goes down. Taking out two out of four. Gonna be taking out another one. And the Panzer IV takes out this one. It's very, very clean. <laughs> as clean as it gets, really, for those units. But yeah, the Panzer IV easily able to dominate the Panzergrens here. These Jagdpanzers quite happy to continuously engage the Panzergren. He can bring in a Stoke 3 all he likes, but the Jagdpanzer is going to win any day. And Theo realizes it. He's done. And that's after 37 minutes and 47 seconds. He, uh, well, I take the game. So there we go. But Theo put up a hell of a fight. He really, really did. Like that game had a moment where I was like, oh no, <laughs> this isn't good. When the Stuggers of First was on the field, when he had both of the Arados up, like that is the scary moment. And that 15 minute mark, that is really bad. He made a mistake with his Arado, which caused it to die to my BF-109. That was really, really good for me. And I guess throughout the game, it was all about just like getting those pieces off the field, killing that Arado, killing the Stukas of first, and then trying to get rid of that last Arado, but I just could never do it. And in the end, 3,960 kills to 3,740 losses is very close, honestly. For a Vanguard balance matchup at 40 minutes, that just shows like how well Theo was doing. But his Panthers were so annoying in this game. And there were moments where I was getting very frustrated with RNG. But it is what it is. It's, it's part of the game. And uh, you can see here, I think Theo has slightly more losses than I have kills. That's probably because he killed some of his own units or got them surrendered with the stickers of us. But there we go. Uh, if we look at the kills, I think my strategy early on was actually pretty solid. Uh, bringing in a lot of MGs and support weapons in the form of these AT guns was great for shutting down the SBW-231s early on. Uh, killing the Fokkerwolf early on was also vital. It's a two-star Fokkerwolf, so it meant that he didn't have another one available in the rest of Phase A, which is why I knew that I could just freely strafe with the DO-217s, and that made another big difference in the early game. The SS Stem Grenadiers did really, really well on the bottom side. Like My early game in general was super good. Uh, for a balance versus Vanguard matchup. It did really, really well. And the Verthrow and killing off the Stug 4 there as well. Uh, just perfect. But then, like, the, the Panthers really kind of came into play and started doing some damage to me. I did manage to kill, kill off uh, all of the Panthers in the end. but And the Arado kill was really, really important. But I think there was just, like, a lot of my armor lost in the mid-game. And then also, like, the bombers were on top of that, right? And that kind of kept opening doors for Theo to push forwards. But then later on, I'm managing to get the better of his uh, Panther D here. Uh, the J-87s came in were a really, really good strike onto like the uh, AT-8. And getting like the pin onto those AT-8s when he's moving them too forwards, you really got to punish that. And I did. I did. I think I did well trying to punish those uh, AT-8s. Uh, the Jagdpans as well, great choice for dealing with enemy Stugs because they just trump them every time. Um, but yeah, if we look at the losses, the Pumas, I may be allowed to do a little bit too much on the bottom side. Uh, they killed off my Panzer III that tried to kill them. But the Arado there, this was the first Arado. It got a few kills. Uh, the second Arado there, look at this. This was uh, really doing a lot of damage. The Tiger E Panzer 38 kill at like the 12, 13 minute mark was huge. It did so much damage to my front line. Uh, and then he got some really tasty bombing strikes as well with that one. Uh, the Stukas of Fuss was more of like a pinning power than anything else. And it did manage to take out some of my support weapons. But check out this Panther D 
with the SBW231, the Stug kill, the another SBW231, a Tiger E, a Stug 3 kill. Like this is this is really bad <laughs> for me. And then this Panther D, Jagdpanzer 4, three Panzer Fours. <laughs> Like that was the reason that he managed to stay in this game so long. As like this Arado plus those Panthers and the Stiggers of Us uh, being a threat as well. As soon as the Panthers are off the field, is Stiggers of Us dead? Is Arado died? Makes things a lot easier, but it definitely took. I definitely took my time. And I think at times, particularly with those Panther engagements, I felt like I was really throwing this game. Thankfully, uh, he was playing Vanguard and I was playing Balance, and I think that's probably the only reason that I managed to pull this off. If he was playing Maverick or Balanced, I reckon I would have lost that game very, very quickly. So, yeah, it was a close one, and... Uh, just hats off to Theo. It just shows how good of a player he really is. But I'm happy to get another win. And that's, I guess, the the the, the story of my first season in the Steel Division League. Because with this game played, unfortunately, that's it for me in the in season eight of the Steel Division League. Uh, that is my last game that I will be playing because I went three and three. Um, I won a set against Theo, I tied the set against CK530, and I lost the set against Attack Power, which means that I am just off from getting in the playoffs. Attack Power and CK both got two ties and one win, which means they were sitting one and two. And going into this matchup against Theo, neither of us could get to playoffs, so I think that's why Theo was messing around a little bit in the first game with an interesting strategy. So yeah, for my uh, first, I guess, delve into the Steel Division League, going 3-3 in hindsight is probably pretty good, honestly. I'm, I'm happy with it. I would say I'm happy with it. I'm disappointed that I didn't get into playoffs. I think it would have been fun if I did, um, particularly for you guys, but... Yeah, I think three and three, especially after the start that I had in the league, uh, is as good as I could have asked for. And I'm happy with my performance against Theo. And I was also happy generally with my performance against CK, apart from obviously picking Maverick when I should have probably picked Balance, because that may have given me the game that I needed to get into playoffs. But, you know, it is what it is. And uh, hindsight is always twenty twenty, And so... You know, in the future, just gonna not make the same mistakes, and maybe next season I can get to playoffs and we can try and move up to Division Two. That would be cool. Um, I will probably try to prepare a little better <laughs> next time around. Uh, but hopefully, you guys have enjoyed my journey in the Steel Division League Season Three. Sorry, Season Eight. Um, it's been a roller coaster, that's for sure started in a very sad way i think uh, i was very disappointed in myself and i i think i ended on a high uh taking three victories in a row uh so yeah it all turned around and i, I think i'm generally happy with how it went so yeah congratulations to attack power and ck in my group anyway for moving on to the playoffs I'll be keeping an eye on that, but for the Steel Division League, I will be covering the playoffs of Division 1, so you guys can look forward to that. Um, that will be with all of the big boys, Gonzo and Nord and so on. <laughs> it's going to be good fun. I might also do like an overall uh, thoughts video on like my first season in Steel Division League, um, so maybe look forward to that as well. That's it for now though. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah,